Welcome to Latino Reads, featuring great authors and leaders. This is the Children's and Young Adult Awards, and we are so happy to have you. We have one last presenter, and we are so thankful for her being with us here today. Please welcome Isabel F. Campoy, a renowned children's book author and advocate for biliteracy. Actually, Mike, she was the one who inspired me to write my poetry book when I was 17 years old. She is also a multiple winner with the International Latino Book Awards. Thank you, gracias. It is such an honor to be with you today in a day to celebrate a new generation of award-winning authors. Hoy celebraremos su éxito. And now on to a great selection of children's picture book awards. Best Children's Fiction Picture Book, Bilingual. How to Fold a Taco by Naibe Reynoso. So I am a Los Angeles native, born and raised here in Los Angeles, California. I'm in such a privileged place to be able to create these books and hopefully make a difference in, you know, in the psyche of our children uh, that will hopefully grow up to see themselves in a wider perspective and not just in a negative perspective, how we've been seeing ourselves, us Latinos in this country for so long. Not only have we been stereotyped, but we've also been invisible in media in children's books. As you guys probably know, we're practically invisible in comparison to other um, ethnicities. So I'm glad to be able to contribute a little bit into bridging that gap. The book that Jake borrowed by Susan Holt Kralovansky. I was an elementary school librarian and I worked in a low income school. And because it was hard for my kids to read, they didn't want to read. And um, so, but you know, they still had things they needed to learn. So I started writing books for my students and I would put my students in it. Oops. So here's one of my books because I wanted to teach them about synonyms and antonyms. They needed to know that for testing. Okay. So I used humor and the kids to get them excited about reading. I'm going to show you another one. Oh, I just, um, and I used to have long hair. And so I always put myself in the books and then I would put my kids in the books and they started getting excited about reading. I made a just, you know, just like this, I made a giant book. And then, so that's this book. So it's this way in English and you flip it over and it's the Spanish version. Best children's fiction picture book, English. Digging for Words by Angela Burke Kunkel. Hi, I'm Angela Kunkel, and I am the author of Digging for Words, Jose Alberto Gutierrez and the Library He Built, which is illustrated by Paula Escobar and is published by Schwartz and Wade, an imprint of Random House. It's also published in a Spanish edition, Rescatando Palabras, and the translation was done by Teresa Mahler. Uh, Digging for Words is based on a true story of Jose Alberto Gutierrez, and uh, Don Jose was a Colombian garbage collector in the city of Bogota, which is a large city but has only 19 public libraries. Um, his project started when he found a book discarded in the trash, brought it home, and read it. And that started a journey of looking for other discarded books and collecting them until it took over the entire first floor of his home and he opened it as a library to the children of his neighborhood. Uh, he's now known as El Señor de los Libros, and the project has gone on to donate uh, discarded books to organizations and schools all across Colombia. So his project continues, and I hope you enjoy learning more about it. Hola, soy Paola Escobar, la ilustradora de Digging for Words. Quiero agradecer enormemente a International Latino Book Awards por este reconocimiento y esta mención a nuestro libro. También a Ángela Kunkel, quien escribió esta maravillosa historia sobre José Alberto Gutiérrez. Desde Colombia, muchas gracias. 
El Cucuy is Scared Too by Donna Barba Higuera. Hi, I'm Donna Barba Higuera, and this is El Cucuy is Scared Too, published by Abrams Kids and illustrated by Uliana Perdomo. And this book is about taking the things that scare us most and conquering our fears. And in this case, we have what scared me most as a child, which was El Cucuy, and how suddenly El Cucuy might not be so scary if there's something that's scarier. And to most of us, there's a universal fear of starting school or moving to a new area and wondering how we're going to make friends or how they'll view us, how we speak, how we dress, and those insecurities. And here we take an unlikely friendship between Ramon and El Cucuy and how they support one another in their mutual fears and they conquer them together. Thank you so much. Evelyn Del Rey is Moving Away by Meg Medina. Hi, thanks for honoring my book, Evelyn Del Rey is Moving Away. It's such an honor for me, especially because this book is about staying connected at a time when we really needed to hear that message. Thanks, Ilva. I really appreciate it. Feathered Serpent and the Five Sons by Duncan Tonatia. Hi, everyone. My name is Duncan Tonatiu. I am an author and illustrator of many books, among them Feather Serpent and the Five Sons and Soldier for Equality. And I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you to the, to the International Latino Book Awards for the wonderful work they do celebrating um, Latinx literature across different languages, across different genres, across different categories. Um, I'm very happy that my books are being considered for, for the award, and I'm very happy to be uh, among such great, um, such great company and, and, and to be a part of this celebration of, of Latinx culture and Latinx um, literature. So, thank you. Gustavo, the Shy Ghost by Flavia Drago. Hello, I am Flavia Z. Drago, and I'm the author and illustrator of Gustavo the Shy Ghost, or Gustavo el Fantasmita Timido in Spanish. I'd like to talk with you a little bit about the inspiration behind this story, which is loosely based on my own experiences as a very shy child. Um, when I was a little girl in kindergarten, I, I used to sit um, by myself, um, just like Gustavo Wonder, how was it so easy for other children to talk and play with one another? It was a mystery to me. Um, this story is an important one for me because being shy doesn't mean that you don't want to connect with others. It just means that you find it harder. Um, especially for the first time. And in my case, I discovered that through drawing, I could connect with others. And Gustavo discovered that through the violin, he could do the same. So we're similar again. Um, this book is was also a, a lovely excuse to draw different my favorite places in Mexico City and in Oaxaca and to draw my favorite celebration which is the Day of the Dead in which we get to remember our late um your our deceased loved ones. As a matter of fact in one of the spreads I I wrote the names of my of my four grandparents who have passed away so it's like a, a way of honoring them within my own book. And also, it was an excuse to draw lots of monsters and Halloween things, which I also liked. Growing up, I liked Halloween and I liked Day of the Dead. I knew that both celebrations were very different, but in, in my head, um, both have a very, very special place. Um, so I hope that you that you will see all the references and that you will enjoy the story. And thank you very much again. Bye-bye. Um, Oscar's American Dream by Barry Wittenstein. My name is Barry Wittenstein 
and I'm the author of Oscar's American Dream. I live in New York City, a city that embraces immigrants and always has. I wanted to write something that celebrated the story of newcomers to this country. My grandparents were immigrants about 100 years ago. I also wanted to write it because I was alarmed by the inhumane immigration policies of the Trump administration. I thought that telling the story of the immigrants through the changing nature of a store would be fun and easy to understand. I also wanted to, to tell the story to address the current situation in many urban areas. That is, small stores being torn down for larger chain stores and fancy high-rise apartments, which is happening all over Manhattan. Storefronts are empty. It's, a ch it's changing the city in a dramatic and not in a good way. I hope that readers learn something about American history by reading the stories of Oscar Nowicki, the Jaffe sisters, and Moises Ortiz Jr. Thank you for the nomination. Congratulations, Oscar team, and thank you so much to the International Latino Book Awards, Schwartz and Wade. Thank you for seeing the beauty and history of the American spirit in this work. Thank you so much, and cheers. Mejor libro ilustrado de ficción para niños. Hijo por Ariel Andrés Almada, ilustrado por Sonia Wimmer. Hola, mi nombre es Ariel Andrés Almada. Estamos muy agradecidos por haber elegido nuestro libro y les mandamos un cariño muy, muy, muy grande desde aquí, desde Europa. Un abrazo grande para todos. Hello, I'm Sonia Wimmer. I'm the illustrator of Sun, which is written by Ariel Andrés Almada and published from, um, by Cuento de Luz. And we'd like to thank you um, very, very much to um, choose our book. And we are very happy about the award. Thank you to all of you in the committee. Um, and big greetings from the other side of the world. La Turita Baldomera por Enrique Balesteros y Esmaliel Arias. Basado en hechos reales, la historia de la burrita baldomera y su amigo Ismael y su emotivo reencuentro. Las acuarelas de Carlota por Loida González Montanegro. Hola a todos y a todas. Bueno, lo primero que quería decirles es que muchísimas gracias por este reconocimiento. De verdad que tanto Carlota como yo estamos muy emocionadas y bueno, les tengo que agradecer ese apoyo que me acaban de brindar y esta gran alegría que significa para nosotros. Best Children's Nonfiction Picture Book Soldier for Equality by Duncan Donatiu Hi everyone, my name is Duncan Tonatiu. I am an author and illustrator of many books, among them Feather Serpent and the Five Sons and Soldier for Equality. And I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you to the to the International Latino Book Awards for the wonderful work they do celebrating um, Latinx literature across different languages, across different genres, across different categories. Um, I'm very happy that my books are being considered for, for the award, and I'm very happy to be uh, among such great, um, such great company and, and, and to be a part of this celebration of, of Latinx culture and Latinx um, literature. So, thank you. That Girl on TV Could Be Me by Leticia Ordaz. Hello, my name is Leticia Ordaz. I'm a television news anchor in Sacramento, California, and I've covered some of the biggest stories in the country for the last 20 years. I've decided to write a children's autobiography called That Girl on TV Could Be Me, The Journey of a Latina News Anchor to inspire boys and girls everywhere to go after their dreams. I was that shy five-year-old girl who didn't see anyone who looked like me on TV, and I wanted to break barriers. 
My parents worked in the fields and worked really hard to provide a better life for us. In this story, I document their journey in this country and how I was able to succeed, how I was able to become the first in my family to go to college and go from television station to television station, climbing up the ladder and working to give my community a voice. I think when children read this story, they will be inspired to go after their own dreams. And I'm really hoping that more librarians and more schools will make this book accessible to all children so all children can see their full potential. Thank you. Best Educational Children's Picture Book, English or Bilingual. Leah and Luis, Who Has More? by Anna Crespo. Hi, my name is Anna Crespo. I am the author of Leah and Luis, Who Has More? Illustrated by Giovanna Medeiros and published by Charles Bridge. The book is part of the series Storytelling Math, which celebrates math diversity and the power of storytelling. Um, the memory that inspired this book was one of my parents asking me what weighs more, a kilo of cotton or a kilo of lead? And of course, they both weigh the same because they're both a kilo, but a kilo of cotton will take a lot more space than a kilo of lead. So then it was a matter of figuring out which Brazilian foods to use to substitute those two items. So I picked biscoito de polvilho for the cotton and uh, coxinha de galinha for the lead and created this pair of siblings fighting over who has more. And that's how the story came about. I hope you really enjoy the book. Thank you so much. Bye. Luisita and COVID-19 by Dora Prisbylek. Hello, friends of the uh, International Latino Book Awards. I'm Dora Trubelek, who also writes as Carmela Escobar when I write in Spanish. I write poetry, uh, like uh, entre líneas, within the lines, that has my poems and also drawings of my uh, flowers. I uh, write a uh, bilingual children's book, uh, Luisita and COVID-19, uh, about cancer also, about recycling people with disabilities. I write since I can remember, but I think I started when I was nine, perhaps. I always see life in the world with the eyes and the mentality of a child, uh, because I like to be an optimistic person. Y mi obra es así, y mi obra, el mensaje que quiero dar siempre es de positivismo. I hope you join me and read my work and join the Dora Przewelek and Carmela Escobar. Thank you, muchas gracias. Madam Hortensia by Carmen Gill, illustrated by Miguel Cerro. Hola, soy Carmen Gil, la autora de Doña Hortensia. Quiero dar las gracias por este premio que recibo con mucha ilusión y un enorme cariño. Felicitaciones a la organización, besos. The Mighty Mesquite by Ramona Winner, illustrated by Evelyn Quijas. Hi, my name is Ramona Moreno Winner, and I'm honored with an award from the International Latino Book uh, Awards for my book, The Mighty Mesquite, El Mesquite Poderoso. As a child, it, living in the Sonoran Desert in Arizona, we played countless hours underneath the trees, and we would eat the, the seed pots called pechita, and we would they kind of have a nice little nutty sweet flavor, and we would be eating them as snacks, and um, we would also my mom would soak the seeds, and it would provide like a nice refreshing drink for us to hydrate with. And so there was so, so much to learn about the mesquite and the desert food web that I thought this would be a lovely book to be able to share a little piece of myself, a little piece of my culture, and um, a lot of information on the desert to individuals that live in the desert and those that are without that don't live there. I also found that uh, the mesquite is very um, diverse. In, it's found in South America. They've used it in 
portions of Africa so that it could provide fodder for the animals and the cattle. So it, uh, it has many wonderful properties for traditional medicine. And I, I, I'm pretty sure that anyone from very young to even elderly would enjoy learning more about it and all of its gifts that it gives back to us. I, I'm very grateful for the award and, um, and I thank you. Mejor libro ilustrado educativo para niños. El baile de las abejas por Fran Nuño, ilustrado por Susana Sele. Un canto a la naturaleza y una bella historia con haikus. Los personajes descubrirán algo que nunca podrán olvidar. Monet y el impresionismo por Ángel de Frutos Acevedo. Hola, somos Ángel de Frutos, autor. Y Leticia Rodríguez, ilustradora de Monet y el impresionismo. Queremos dar las gracias al jurado por esta valoración tan positiva de nuestro libro y la enhorabuena a todos los demás finalistas. También queríamos agradecer a nuestros familiares y amigos por el apoyo que siempre nos han dado. Muchísimas gracias, os queremos. Zumo de Nube por Dr. Raúl Alelu Paz una divertida historia para todos aquellos que aún temen a las noches llenas de sonidos y luces que vienen desde el cielo. Libro más inspirador ilustrado para niños. El increíble barco del Capitán Marco por Alicia Acosta. Soy Alicia Costa y desde aquí, desde España, quería agradecerle a todo el equipo de Nube 8 el apoyo incondicional en esta maravillosa locura que se llama Escribir Literatura Infantil. También darle las gracias a la organización por este reconocimiento a mi trabajo que es tan especial y tan importante para mí. Luna Musical por Mayra Leticia Ortiz Padua. Pero Luna Musical... Es, está participando con eh, el premio del libro más inspirador y es la historia de un niño y la relación que tiene con, con una gata. Sus padres se separan y su mamá no encuentra, ¿verdad?, qué más hacer para lograr que el niño sea feliz porque la separación de sus padres, ¿verdad?, fue bastante traumática para el niño y lo lleva a tomar unas clases de piano. La historia gira en torno eh, a Alex, Alexander, ¿verdad? Eh, y la, las dificultades ¿verdad? que todo niño tiene cuando hay una separación y cuando hay una unión entre los padres, ¿verdad? Tan fuertes esos lazos. Y cómo a través pues, de la música y de los animales logra alcanzar, ¿verdad? Esa, esa felicidad y volver a... Eh, a lo que son los sentimientos que nos atan a, a la familia, ¿verdad? Al amor de, de padre y de madre. La historia está basada en hechos reales, eh, está basada en la historia de una muy querida amiga eh, y colega, quien pasó por la situación actualmente, pues ya Alex, el protagonista de la historia en una musical, es adulto y de hecho vivió hasta muy poco, ¿verdad? En California. Y Amanda, su mamá, que es directora de escuela y también es maestra, eh, ambos me inspiraron a, a escribir esta maravillosa historia que también trabaja con lo que es la musicología, las emociones, los sentimientos y las relaciones, ¿verdad? Un misterio en el bosque por Susana Isern, ilustrado por Daniel Montero Galán. Una bella historia que nos hará reflexionar sobre la respuesta emocional de los celos, la importancia de la empatía y la capacidad de perdonar. Most Inspirational Children's Picture Book, Bilingual or English. Aspire, Aspirar, by Patty York Raymond. Hi, I'm Patty York Raymond. I wanted to tell you a little bit about my book, Aspire, Aspirar. It's a flip over book in English, Spanish. The illustrator is Chiara Savarisi and the translator is Dr. Isaias C. Rodriguez. 
Aspire Aspirar is about a mother and daughter that go on weekend long adventures. Now, during these adventures, the girl is participating in a variety of activities. And it, within these activities, the little girl starts to consider what careers or occupations she might be able to go into based on those activities, as I just mentioned. Now, I wanted to write Aspire, Aspirar, to celebrate the influential women in our lives and inspire our young girls to think big. It's my hope that mothers and daughters will want to share in the joys of this book while giving them an opportunity to discuss the possibilities of their future. They'll want to download the original song written for this book by Eddie Cavazos and myself, um, entitled Aspire, performed by Julissa Figueroa, um, and they can download that uh, from any music uh, platform of their choice in order to reinforce vocabulary development and comprehension of the story. I'm a retired educator and social worker, although I do have a case management business called Abrazo Case Management Services for Children and Pregnant Women, and I'm in Hidalgo County with, uh, in Texas. Um, I'm also an independent education consultant uh, contracted to work with new teachers. Thank you so much. Bean Saves the Day by Ray A. Banda. Hello, my name is Ray Banda, author out of Westaco, Texas, and a special education teacher. My book, Bean Saves the Day, is about a kitten that makes a big difference in its own special way. This book is based on a true story and how I rescued my own special needs cat and how we changed my life as well. So join Bean as we work together and face and conquer our fears. El Sol Ahumado, The Smoky Sun, by Trilingual Kids. El Sol Ahumado, The Smoky Sun is a bilingual book created by Feppy Books. Our books seek to teach kids lifelong values through fun and colorful stories. This book tells the story about the sun who one day couldn't raise and shine. The sun felt ill from the smoke and pollution in the cities. Throughout the story, we learn that we all have to take care of our environment. I invite you to read this story and learn how the sun got well and warm our planet and hearts again. Stories are a great way to teach kids values like respect, friendship, empathy, and why not? How to take good care of the planet. All our FEPI books are bilingual, Spanish and English, looking to expose kids to both languages and to help raise the next generation of open-minded global citizens. Thank you. The Tale of the Black Unicorn by Sandra Elaine Scott. Hi, I'm Sandra Elaine Scott, and I am the author of The Tale of the Black Unicorn. I wrote this book after a mother approached me that her child was having issues accepting the color of her skin. Divinely inspired, the story was downloaded to me, and with the love of all things magical, the tale of the black unicorn was born. Reina is a special unicorn who loves playing with her friends until the day she starts to change. When magical things start to happen, she tries to hide her differences. With an empowering message from her parents, she hears, you are loved, you are beautiful, you are you. That is my wish for all children, young and old, to dream big bodacious dreams, love yourself, and have magical, joy-filled days. And remember, you are loved, you are beautiful, you are you. Best Learn to Read Book Another Wild Day in Kuski's Life by Rina Sol de Villa Bilingual Children's Picture Book on the Adventures of Kuski A Basin G Breed Hay Mucho Viento by Patty York Raymond Hi, Patty York Raymond here. I wanted to tell you a little bit about my book, I Mucho Viento, 
The illustrators by Sadipta uh, Desgupta, translated by Gabriel Sanchez and edited by Dr. Isaias C. Rodriguez. Ay Mucho Viento is about a brother and sister who go visit their grandparents and play with their cousins. The problem in the story is that grandma doesn't let them get into the pool. She cites unsatisfactory weather conditions as a reason why. Now, I wanted to write Ay Mucho Viento to celebrate our grandparents and to thank them for the wonderful memories we have of them while growing up. I think parents and children alike will enjoy the repetitive text and the rhyming words within this book. I think they'll also have a lot of fun making inferences as to and, and try to figure out uh, why grandma is not letting them get into the pool. They will also want to download the original theme song, That's What My Grandma Said, written by Eddie Cavazos and myself from any uh, music platform of their choice in order to sing and dance while sequencing the story. It's performed by Eddie Cavazos with Cavazos Music. Now, I'm a retired educator and social worker, though I do have a case management business called Abrazo Case Management Services for Children and Pregnant Women in Hidalgo County here in Texas. Um, I am um, also an independent education consultant contracted to work with new teachers. Thank you. Thank you, writers, readers, and our familia Latine that honors the richness of our cultures and the dignity of our roots. Enhorabuena a todos. Well, well, thank you so much, Isabel. Thank you so much for tuning in and a huge thank you to our partners. And thank you for hosting with me, Mike. This was so much fun. Wow. It was such a joy and such a pleasure, Alina. You made it so much fun. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Adios, Adios. everyone. Take care. Read a book. <laughs> Bye.